Well, now that we've actually gone ahead and discussed pricing objectives as well as the strategy piece, how we're going to achieve those objectives, it's important that we discuss the actual specifics related to pricing. Uh, there are a number of tools that can be used as a way of fine-tuning the actual pricing. Businesses have to consider a lot of different things if they're going to price their products uh, not only competitively, but also to the point where they're going to cover a lot of their costs. And so one of the easiest ways uh, or easiest tools that you can utilize is what we call a break-even analysis. And a break-even analysis is simply a process that's used to determine the number of units that you would have to sell to cover your cost. And so I'll abbreviate the break-even point as BP. And so we're going to refer to the number of units that are needed to cover our costs. And so ideally as a business, you wouldn't just sell whatever number this is because you're covering your costs. You're not necessarily making any money. Ideally, you'd be able to sell more than this. And so this is a great starting point for a discussion to know that, well, is it feasible for us to sell this number of products? And if it is, great. If it isn't, though, well, what are some of the things that we can do? What are the variables that we can change so that it is a little more reasonable? Uh, so let's go through. Let me show you first what the equation is for a break-even point. And the break-even point is simply first your fixed costs. Fixed costs uh, do not vary over time within a certain relevant range. And so these often include things like uh, plants and property and equipment uh, and even advertising, insurance, taxes. These are commonly fixed costs. And the reason they're fixed is because they don't vary based upon the number of products that you sell. Right? So if I sell nothing, I know I still have to pay utilities, I still have to pay the lease for the property I'm using, I still have to pay certain insurance costs and different things, I still pay advertising, uh, and so they're fixed, they don't vary based upon production. Uh, so I take my fixed cost, and then what I do is I divide that by first my price of my product, so whatever is the selling price for my product, what consumers have to give up to obtain my product less what we call variable costs, which I'll abbreviate as VC. And variable costs, contrary to fixed costs, vary based upon the number of units produced. And so if you produce you know, five of a particular product, then ultimately you're going to take your fixed costs multiplied by five. So they go up with every unit they're produced. Typically, variable costs include things like direct materials, and so the materials that actually went into assembling that product typically includes direct labor, and so the actual people that assembled the product and that put it together, obviously the more time they spent is based upon how much you produce. So those are all things that you would essentially consider in variable costs and then a few other things. So let me show you how you would actually work this here. Uh, let's say that we actually produce cell phone cases and we have a fixed cost of $500,000. And so these are the costs that we incur just without any production whatsoever. This is plants, property, equipment, advertising, taxes, those types of things do not vary based upon how many units we sell. And we sell these cell phone cases for, let's just say, $20 each. And it costs us about $10 in fixed cost to make them. So for every case we can sell for $20, we pay $10 to actually have it made. So with this equation, we would actually have a break-even point of 50,000 units. And so whether or not this is attractive will depend on a number of different factors. You may look at this and say, I have to produce 50,000 or sell, not produce, but sell 50,000 of these cases in order for me just to cover the cost that I have. And in large part, that's driven by the fixed costs, which are a little high. Now, but that might not be feasible. Right? Or it may be, well, 50000 that's nothing. I was going to sell way more than that, or I'm projected to sell a lot more than that. In that case, this might be very encouraging. But if it's not, if this is somewhat of a concern, right? if you were planning, well, I thought I was going to sell about 5000 the first year, not 50000 I don't want to be in the you know, negative for an extended period of time. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should you know, just scrap everything and go back to the drawing board. This is a starting point for a good discussion. And the reason is, is that you might be able to change a couple of these variables, right? There are three variables that are here, fixed cost, price, and variable costs. And so maybe 
we can actually change things, right? We can do a couple of different things. Maybe we have the ability to raise our price a little bit. Maybe we're not priced competitively. We're undercutting ourselves. And so if we raise price, that means our margins are better, which in turn means we don't need to sell as many products to actually break even, right? The break even point would be less than 50,000 units. So that's one thing we can look at. We can look at possibly reducing our fixed costs, right? Things like the actual plant that we're using, right? Maybe it's too big for us. Maybe we can actually downsize, get a smaller plant, still be able to produce effectively and efficiently, but now we're lowering our fixed costs. Maybe we need to reduce our advertising expenditures. Maybe we need to reduce you know, the utilities that we pay, which would be kind of similar to you know, reducing our plant size. We probably wouldn't pay as much in utilities. And so if you lower your fixed costs, that would also make it so that you wouldn't need to sell as many products to just break even. And then lastly, we can lower those variable costs, right? The costs that are directly associated with producing products. And so this can include finding maybe less expensive materials to go into the product. Obviously, try not to sacrifice quality to any significant degree. We can try and find more efficient ways of producing the product. So maybe we don't have to pay as much in labor to produce them. We find cheaper ways to do that, maybe faster ways to do that. Uh, and so those are some things that you can consider, raising prices, decreasing variable costs, decreasing fixed costs. The important thing is that these three areas here are variables that you can change, uh, but you may not be able to change them significantly enough to make the break-even point reasonable based upon your business. Uh, but it at least is a starting point for a discussion. And so just because the break-even point is maybe a little higher than you originally anticipated, you at least can think through, well, what are some of the different ways that we can change it? So ultimately, maybe it is a little more attractive, but by no means would you look at the break-even point and then simply uh, stop at that point. You, you can go a little further and do a little more research and those different types of things, but a very useful tool, very easy to use, very basic. You'll probably spend more time adding up all the fixed and variable costs and determining what is you know, fixed versus variable than actually solving the equation but very, very valuable going forward to help you price your products.